Hey there, my name is Lexi, and thank you so much for joining me for another read along for Omarion's book, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. Today, we are reading chapter nine, Gratitude is My Attitude. Gratitude is a balancing tool in my life. It allows me to appreciate what I have, from my ability to do what I love for a living to the heartbeat in my chest. Through meditation, journaling, and simply being alive, I am able to ground down by giving thanks for another day. Nothing happened in particular that transformed my relationship with gratitude other than choosing to open my eyes and pay closer attention to myself and the world around me. Life is fleeting, and waking up to gratitude was a transformation that felt aligned with who I was growing into. Not every transformation comes with a specific practice or teacher. Sometimes we just wake up and start seeing the world through new eyes. You can and will change when you're ready. That is the beauty in the journey. Not taking life for granted is when we can truly start to see gratitude as a daily and easeful practice. Gratitude is defined as the quality of being thankful, the readiness to show appreciation, and the return to kindness. Looking at being grateful through that lens resonates so deeply with me because it's simple. Gratitude invites us to show up, be human, and focus on the little things in front of us. When we sit back and take a moment to realize those simple things, we can grasp at the importance of being grateful and present for the small moments. Sometimes I do a gratitude practice in which I think about life and imagine sitting alone in a garden somewhere and watching a butterfly pass by. Being alive is like this delicate dance that invites us to pay attention and really look at what's in front of us. If we blink, we can miss its beauty. As a father, I often think about how fast my kids are growing up and all the moments in between. Having gratitude for big and little things reminds me that nothing is promised but the transition to return back into the universe. With that being true for each and every one of us, being grateful for the days I have been given invites me to think beyond this body and my current experience. Giving thanks for all that we walk through is where true self-awareness lies. When life is showing us things not just about others but also about ourselves, the practice of gratitude allows us to sit back, take a look at our lives, and really be thankful that we are here to learn and experience even when we are faced with challenges. It's also an opportunity to look at where we are and what we've walked through and find peace in the process. For me, it's a reminder to keep moving forward, to keep being open to the miracles that life has to offer. Being grateful is a gift to the soul that allows us to see the beauty in our darkest moments. Energy check. Gratitude is my attitude. What are the benefits of having gratitude? What have others done in your life that you're grateful for? What makes you laugh or smile lately? What do you appreciate? What in nature inspires you and why? My Nana was first diagnosed with cancer in 2014. She went into remission and it came back again in 2018. That experience has taught me a lot about being grateful for the time I have with the people I love. Spending time with my Nana, loving, sharing, and surrounding myself with her love, spiritual knowledge, family stories, and laughter has highlighted the importance of time and how we invest and spend it. Focusing my energy on creating moments with her and my family that will last a lifetime and create a legacy is valuable. Gratitude enhances relationships and reminds us to pay attention and be in the moment. Watching my Nana smile, tell stories, and share her wisdom is a precious gift that I will be forever blessed by. I find so much liberation in paying attention to the smallest details and giving thanks for being able to witness them. Having an attitude of gratitude requires a certain level of appreciation. There will be moments when we have to go through things, like a loved one being ill, to see the true gift of being grateful for the time and moments of the now. Something that I constantly keep in mind is that we have the power to find gratitude everywhere, even when we think we're blind to it. When we are truly paying attention to what's happening around us, we can see the goodness overflowing in our lives. We have to be open to seeing and recognizing it though. This too is a practice of mindfulness, being open to the gifts of life. 
Appreciating the small things in life and the little things that may otherwise be overlooked is how an attitude of gratitude is cultivated. This can amplify positivity in our lives and give us the desire to do better and be better. Living in gratitude is inspiring on so many levels. My Nana is grateful for every day she has had and is given on this earth. Watching her stand in her power, even with cancer, is a wake-up call for me to be fully present in every moment of clarity, love, and beauty. As I grow and move through this life, I am open to receiving each gift that gratitude offers me, especially the joys of life like watching my Nana dance, make shea butter, cook, and create jewelry. Having a grateful spirit in the highs and lows of life is a reminder that there is always something to see the good in. There is always more to learn and to appreciate. The little things will pass us by if we are not open to seeing them fully, even our challenges. I've learned so much about being grateful for the not so fun experiences of life. As we know, things aren't always great, joyous, and beautiful. And even still, opening our hearts up to see what those adverse moments are trying to teach us is another gratitude gift. I am most grateful for the knowledge that life has taught me. I've gained so much insight into what success looks like and how we are seen by the world. What matters most to me is how I am seen and felt by the ones closest to me. My Nana, my kids, my mom, my brother, my family. That is what truly matters in my life and in my world. Externally, we get messages about how and who we should be. That can cloud what really matters. It can shift our perspective and blind us from recognizing our true selves. I am grateful that for me and my life, I've stayed connected to what it means to be present and honest in expression and growth. It's not always easy to do. It takes a commitment to self-awareness to not waver in the face of adversity and external noise. Happy for you, meditation. Celebrating others brings happiness and wholeness into my being. Nine, when I rejoice with others, I multiply the good times I get to celebrate. Nine, I know being a hater is not a good thing. Nine, the more I put out, the more I will receive in return. Nine, I sincerely congratulate others on their success. Nine, I free myself from frustration, worry, and comparisons. Nine, I improve my relationship with others by sharing both ups and downs. Nine, I look forward to welcoming more joy into my life. Nine, the number nine symbolizes divine completeness. Nine, in the face of my Nana's illness, I am confronted by how much her life and legacy will continue to shape and teach me long after she's gone. The older I get and the older she gets, I'm encouraged to sit with her more and learn from her in a new way. Nana and I have a deep history. When I was born, she was the first person to touch me. A practicing doula, she delivered me. And since that day, we have had a bond that is unmatched. My relationship with my Nana is special for a lot of unspoken reasons. How my Nana helped raise us was an example of the trickle-down effect. Growing up, she gave me a vast perspective of life and culture, and I admire her deeply for that. Gratitude flows when I think about how she taught us and continues to teach us, even though my siblings and I are adults. Before I knew myself, my Nana knew me. She knew that I would be a gift in some way, let her tell it. My Nana tells this story of when my mom got pregnant with me at 16. A lot of people around were advocating for an abortion. The first thing Nana said when she heard that was, we don't kill our own, we show up. When I heard that story, I was so moved because that right there made it clear that she had already spoken for me before I even arrived, before anyone knew who or what I would be in this world. I was born on the evening of November 12th, a surprise early arrival. My mom was having her baby shower. Nana jokes and says that because I had gotten my gifts, I was ready to get to the party. And since the day I was born, she's been by my side. She is exceptional, not just to me, 
but to other people. To this day, Nana is revered by kids in the neighborhood my mom grew up in. I'm grateful for the unbreakable bond that I have with my family. It keeps me centered and reminds me of how far I've come. We grew up in a neighborhood that was violent and had a lot of gangs, and my Nana was able to keep us safe and feeling loved through that chaos. There was never a feeling of being unloved. My siblings and I were well protected and shown how to be the best we could be despite our surroundings. Over the years, I've seen my Nana fight and be a warrior, and she has yet to lose her shit-talking wit, spark, or charisma. Gratitude for the little things is what I see when I look at my Nana and all she's walked through. I've been asking her a lot more questions lately in the midst of her illness to soak up her wisdom and learn from her life experiences. When she talks, I listen. We all do. She mentioned in one of our conversations that life is what we make it. I asked her what she wished someone told her when she was growing up. Her answer was enlightening. She said, to be happy. In her explanation, she shared that happiness is up to us. Everything we do is in our hands. This wisdom blew my mind and made me even more committed to loving my family and leaning into growth. My Nana got married at 17 and to hear her say she wished someone told her more about happiness and the power of choice really made me think of how many people do things because they think they have no other choice. Of course, Times were different when she was a young woman, but the fact that she intentionally helped raise us to be happy, free thinkers is a blessing. Nana is the oldest of eight children, so she had roles and responsibilities that her siblings did not. Listening to her talk, I could tell that she wished some things were different, and maybe she felt like she didn't have a choice when it came to certain experiences. To say I'm grateful for the sacrifices she made for our bloodline would be an understatement. She is the change maker in our family, the first person to touch me as I entered the world, the one who spoke up for me when I had to be born. There is something special and sacred about that. My Nana is still just as nurturing and witty as she's always been. She knows I have everything, yet she still asks me if I need anything. If I say no, she'll find something to offer. For as long as I can remember, she's always wanted to give, not just tangible things, Her ability to pay close attention and to offer the gift of her presence and love continues to inspire me. She's special for more reasons than I can count. I know when she leaves this earth, it will be my job to step in as the oldest grandson and keep her legacy alive. Nana is one of a kind. I've seen her fight to stay alive and I've witnessed her perseverance. It's been hard at times, but she always expressed gratitude for life and being able to see another day. One weekend, when she was recovering from a chemo treatment, we were sitting outside talking. I remember looking at her small 95-pound frame and thinking how much of a fighter she is. It has been hard for her to eat and keep food down. She was tiny because of cancer, but still mighty in her ability to overcome and to be present with us. Witnessing my Nana growing older has made life and death feel more real to me. I'm reminded that with age comes the deterioration of time. For all of us, it's inevitable that our time on earth will come to an end. Having an attitude of gratitude teaches me to continue growing into the man I was raised to be. I'm the first one in my family to have access to certain things and knowledge. Because of that, my familial generation has it easier than my mom and my grandmother. That is growth. Every stride the folks before us took for the betterment of our lineage blessed me, my siblings, and cousins. Life has taught me that if we don't learn and become better, we will suffocate. It can choke us out and leave us lost. Not learning how to do better and how to live a life that is fulfilling can kill you. I keep taking notes from the elders in my life. Every chance I get, I ask my Nana questions about her life, lessons, and feelings. It's been interesting to learn that she had to fight for most things in her life. Even now, there have been certain moments where I've wondered if she wanted to quit and give up. If she did, none of us would blame her. Life is hard, but she's never tapped out. She's always stood in her ability to be resilient, even with her fight with cancer. Everything we face in life is a piece of our realization. All the things we walk through are a part of our experience. The most important takeaway in this phase of my life is sitting down and listening to my elders, to absorb the stories of my Nana while she's still here, 
to learn from them. That is the trick, paying attention and becoming better while doing it. Growing up, we all lived together for a while before my mom got her own place. I remember living as a unit so clearly and learning from the women in my life at such a young age. There were moments when I wanted a father figure around, but I'm grateful that things were what and how they were as I reflect on my childhood and my lessons in becoming a man. My life would not be what it is if things were different. The older I get, the deeper my love and appreciation grows for my Nana. She's such a special lady and her humor is on point. I could sit and laugh with her all day. I try to memorize her movements when she dances and sings. Her spirit is so vibrant. We all get so much for her. She taught us early on to be seen. She likes to show up and have all eyes on her. You know, she enjoys being seen and she taught us not to shrink or cower. I have deep gratitude for the examples she set and continues to set for me. Affirmations for gratitude. Read these out loud in a seated position. I am grateful for my breath. I am grateful for my life. I am grateful for my beating heart. I am grateful for my discernment. I am grateful for my challenges. I am grateful for releasing what no longer serves me. I have an attitude of gratitude and I am growing every single day. I am grateful. What it means to me. Standing firm in gratitude is a beautiful test of paying attention. I am reminded that every day I rise is a blessing. I do not take my life for granted. Over the years, I have started paying closer attention to the little things that make me who I am. Being grateful for the highs and lows of life is a reminder that we are alive and blessed. The challenging life moments have taught me so much about myself, and I am grateful for that. The easeful life moments have taught me about appreciating what is in front of me, and I am grateful for that too. Having an attitude of gratitude is a sacred reminder not only to be alive, but also to be present. Reader Reflection What are you most grateful for in your life? List your challenges in your journal and pair them with gratitude. List your wins in your journal and pair those with gratitude also. Learn to be thankful for it all. There is a lesson of love and understanding waiting for you on the other side. As I look back on my life, I am grateful for all the messages that the universe has given me over the years. I am humbled by listening and paying attention to the signs and wonders of what is around me. I'm grateful that I am able to connect with people and make them feel good through music and dance. I'm humbled by the teachings of my Nana as I've grown into a man who is intentional and purpose-driven. Being a medium of music, a son, father, and grandson, I have learned the importance and power of authenticity and freedom. Having an impact on those around me, from my fans to my loved ones, also has a deep and resounding impact on me. I am thankful for the ability to touch lives, listen to others, and bring joy to those I encounter. There is no greater feeling than that. Everything that has gone wrong and right in my life has been a lesson of perseverance and courage. I give thanks for it all. It all made and shaped me into the man I am today. It's easy to get discouraged and caught up in what we didn't have, but I am committed to seeing and accepting the good of what I did have. Through it all, I've been able to clearly realize my value as an individual and as a member of society. I'm clear about the life I want to live and actualize for myself. That brings me a lot of joy and gratitude. I've been through highs and lows just like everyone else, and as an entertainer, I think folks overlook the humanness of the work I do. I am so much more than an artist and musician. I am so much more than a famous entertainer. I am a son, a dad, a brother, and a man who learned every single day what it means to live in alignment with my highest good, not just for myself, but also for those around me. I was raised by women who instilled selflessness in me, they taught me how to show up for others and be accountable for how I move through life. What continues to give me purpose and commitment to living gratefully is realizing the strength it takes to start over and begin again. 
I've dropped the ball many times. I've stumbled and got shit wrong a lot. Lessons are born when we hit the ground sometimes. The best thing we can do to course correct is to get back up and try again. Failure comes with life. Success is not easy to hold on to. There has to be trial, error, and dedication to keep learning and getting better. Something innate inside me stays motivated to wake up every day, start over, and come up with a new plan, idea, or strategy to be the very best version of O that I can be. If my Nana can be the fighter she is, I have no choice but to be a fighter too. There are no excuses, and for me, being average is not an option. I come from a bloodline of greatness. Every single day we are blessed with is a new day to start from scratch and create the life you long for. It's a new day to be grateful for all the things you've learned, all the breakthroughs you've had, and all the moments you've been blessed with. My Nana's wisdom allows this to ring true for me. Gratitude, for me, is about shifting perspective and being open to change. Nothing stays the same. Everything changes and takes on a new shape. Being grateful, even for the hard shit, is growth. And within the repetitiveness of life, there is a bliss that I am still searching for. One that often brings me back to giving thanks for all that I've gone through and learned from over the years. I continue to be motivated and inspired by people in life and the experiences that I walk through. Having an attitude of gratitude can change you. It forces you to look closely. It's an invitation to pay very close attention to who you are and who you pray you'll be one day. I'm constantly inspired by the flexibility offered in gratitude. It shows me the importance of stretching my mind to understand new things. We have to be hungry for it. We have to be motivated to open our eyes to see it. We have to be hungry to get fed. That requires determination and dedication to being better than we were yesterday, to be more present than we've been before. Living this way and thinking how I do has helped me attain inner clarity. Being grateful for every step of my journey has offered me a more present reality, a more confident reality. Not second guessing myself and allowing doubt, fear, or negativity to pierce my spirit is a daily practice. It brings me back to my attitude of gratitude. Each step in my career and personal life has offered me newfound confidence and courage to manifest and create the life I'm destined to live. As I've listened to Nana's stories over the years, one of the key things she's expressed is the magic in being decisive and refusing to second guess yourself when your gut is speaking the truth to you. Intuition is something that offers clarity and deepens my sense of gratitude. Over time, this has put things into perspective. And when things are in view, we become more thoughtful and intentional. When we are willing to accept all that greets us in life, we have a great chance of winning. Everything that we set our mind to that we think is the right move won't always be the right move. And even in those moments, there is something to be learned. Over time, we discover how to succeed and create abundance by failing. That is why when a situation arrives that can knock us down or throw us for a loop, being decisive and confident can make you feel like you're capable of building the life that you want to live even when adversity strikes. We won't always get what we want. I've seen and experienced that firsthand. And when that happens, when we lose or stumble, We must be aware and present enough to create room for gratitude and do things differently the next time. Even though specific outcomes weren't what we wanted, there's peace in the knowledge that we can reroute and change course. Moving on is part of my freedom to live in gratitude. As my Nana so often reminds me, it's all up to me. I want to encourage you with those same words. The life you want to live is all up to you. Give thanks for everything you've faced, even if you feel like it's broken you. You're not broken. None of us are. 
Lean into the wholeness of your life and experiences. Being present will teach you about things that are greater than yourself. Gratitude is my attitude mantra. At this very moment, I am grateful. I am thankful that I have everything that I need. Thank you. I am grateful that I have the strength to get through difficult moments. Thank you. I acknowledge and appreciate the divine sanction placed on my life. Thank you. Gratitude brings me harmony with everything good. Thank you. I am grateful for the abundance in my life. Thank you. I disrupt anxiety with gratitude. Thank you. At this very moment, I am grateful. Gratitude is my attitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will do all that I can to live in the moment and not rush my process. Letter to my children, Ame and Mega. When you read this letter years from now, when you're older and able to understand these words on a deeper level, I hope it leaves you feeling supported and deeply loved by me. Words cannot express how grateful I am to be a part of your lives. As your father, I'm honored to share my knowledge and wisdom with you both. This advice can be applied to all aspects of your life. Remember them to hold them close. I want to start by reminding you that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. Yes, anything. With hard work, commitment, and dedication, all that your heart desires can be experienced. Life is a journey that continues to unfold year after year, experience after experience. Remember to be present in the moment and have gratitude for the divine sanction. Everything you encounter will leave you with a lesson and takeaway if you pay close enough attention. Be true to yourself always. You are irreplaceable and always enough. Live and thrive persistently. Trust in yourself and stand firm on your words and stay forever aligned with the truth, your truth. Purpose, passion, wellness, family, friends, discernment, and impact of experiences should fill and overflow your life's cup, good, bad, or indifferent. Respect is the base foundation to build good things. Realize true lies and separate the people whose words aren't harmonious with their actions. Hold your friends and family accountable. Be a truth seeker and never stop learning. Having respect for yourself and others creates a fair environment. Be unpredictable. And don't ever forget to pay close attention to the signals of your gut. Your intuition will lead you if you let it. Channel your emotions. Utilize your strengths. Always keep it real, especially with yourself. My love for you all stretches beyond the cosmos. Our love has no beginning and no end. All you need to be happy is within you. Many people seek happiness in food, drugs, alcohol, shopping, partying, sex, money, and approval from others because external validation is comforting. What they don't realize is that the tools for happiness are not outside them. They're within us all. Gratitude, compassion, thoughtfulness, mindfulness, and the ability to create and do something meaningful, even in a nominal way, make life worth living. Happiness lives in the middle of it all. Never stop learning. Have fun, stay active, and be healthy. Never avoid discomfort. Stay ready so you won't have to get ready. Have a plan. Strategize. You don't need anyone else to make you happy or validate you. You don't need a boyfriend or girlfriend to tell you that you're lovable. You are love. No questions asked. Having loved ones, friends, and family in your life is amazing. And still, you must know and trust who you are. No one else, no matter how much they love you, can do that for you. Remember to always be yourself. As you mature, 
Make sure you learn to take the necessary time to know yourself and unapologetically be you. Hold yourself and how you treat others in high regard because community is a beautiful thing. Be confident and kind in all that you do. Treat people with honesty, dignity, and respect. There is only one you. You have to be your authentic and entire self. Keep that in mind as you navigate life. Enjoy life as a daily process and practice. Lean into being different and unique. That is what makes you great. Being yourself is a beautiful thing. There may be times where you stray, but you can always find your way back when you stay grounded in your ability to grow and change. Becoming your father gave me 2020 vision. Your births shed light on some changes that I needed to make in my life. You both are reflections of that change and growth. You woke up a new person inside of me. Mega, I remember when you were born, I really got to see what a miracle was for the first time. Seeing you come into the world was surreal and such a revelation of beauty. Having a son made me want to man up and be the very best version of myself. You made me responsible and created room for me to go deep within my experience. No one taught me how to be a dad. No manuscript came with parenthood. In the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing, but having you both as my children made me want to learn and grow in new ways. Learning as you go will be how you figure things out at some points in life. You both brought awareness to my immense focus. Raising you has required me to explore a new version of myself. I did a lot of self-reflecting and I learned what it meant to do things for myself and others. I hope I've shown you how to be loving, giving, and caring. Being your father is an honor and fatherhood has helped me immensely become a greater version of myself. Change is the one constant thing in life. You will suffer trying to hold on to things that you need to grow from. Learn to let go. Find wholeness in releasing what is no longer uplifting your spirit. Continue to meditate and stay close to your inner truth. Keep a flexible mind. Don't get stuck in a rut. Don't shut out what's new and uncomfortable. Try new things and be receptive to new possibilities, especially when things don't go as planned. Be willing to accept the wounds that come with having an open heart. Life is astonishing if you don't shut out the world. Stay curious and flexible. If at first you don't succeed, take a beat, then take another crack at it. Trial and error are sacred. Be resilient, have gangster persistence. Stay in touch with mother nature, plant trees, go on hikes, ride bikes, dance forever, respect the planet, breathe in the fresh air around you. Remember that you are alive and that is a blessing to this earth. Help others and take good care of yourselves and each other. Your bond as brother and sister is irreplaceable. Keep things in your life that are in alignment with your purpose. Don't ever doubt how valuable you are. As you grow and evolve, you'll learn that certain things and people won't be able to grow with you. You must be mindful of this part of the journey. Shedding is hard, but we are all made to let go at some point. Don't hold yourself hostage to your mistakes. Apologize when you're wrong. Be kind to yourself when you fail. Everything happens for a reason and in divine time. You don't have to rush anything because whatever is meant for you will find its way. Work hard at the things you love and the things you don't love. Keep your word and finish what you start. Effort counts and is extremely important. Always know no matter what, I love you with every fiber of my being. And no matter where you go on this life's journey, the essence of my life lives inside of you. You don't have to make me proud because I already am. Have pride in yourself and stay connected to your passions, truth, and the infinite possibilities that this life has to offer. Continue to carry it on through the generations to come. Know that I'm with you always. There is not a step you can take where I won't be. Both of you are a gift to my life and the world. Keep being the amazing people you were born to be. Love, Dad. Omari Ishmael Granberry. 
I choose to see the good in people. I choose to see everyone's value. Even if we don't mesh or agree, it all comes back to choice. I refuse to be hardened by the struggles of life and being let down. I choose to rise up and remember what I bring to the table. So to be completely honest with you, the main thing that sticks in my head after reading that chapter is the letter to my children, the letter that Omarion wrote to his kids, Ame and Mega. And it's just such a beautiful, it's a beautiful letter. It really is. It's a beautiful letter and so many great reminders for ourselves. Like honestly, while I was reading it, I was being kind of dramatic and thinking to myself, you know, this is the part in the movie where the main character has gone through something tough, like in Princess Diaries, right? When she was just going through a really rough time and she was about to give up and run away. And then she found the letter from her dad and it was just encouraging her and telling her how amazing she is. And she doesn't have to be anybody but herself. And she doesn't even have to try to make them proud because parents are already proud that you're here and it's just a beautiful a really beautiful sentiment that I was reading but the main like the best line that stuck out to me and really like hit my heartstrings hit my heart chords is on page 181 it says be willing to accept the wounds that come with having an open heart and the reason why this line sticks out to me so much is because more recently I'll say probably in the last three or four months or so, I've come to the realization and I've been really loud and more vocal about telling other people this and trying to get other people to come to the realization that being a nice person, we have to be tough too. Like the reason why it feels like all the negativity gets so much attention is because usually negative people are loud Usually people who have nothing else to offer, they are flaunting that one thing, you know? Have you ever, well, I don't, I don't wanna ask that question just yet, but I know for me, I'm thinking on experiences that I've had as a music artist where I'm not the most flamboyant in the room. It's expected of us as artists to have like this high energy and be all up in everybody's face and just, be doing extra stuff to garner attention, right? And that's never really been my style. I don't really want the attention until I'm on stage. (laughs) So that's the difference for me, right? But I always thought to myself, there would be girls who were, you know, just being loud and honestly kind of ratchet and, you know, they're shaking they shaking they butt. I feel like cursing. They shaking their ass and they're twerking and they're all up in everybody's face and they're being overly sexual. And it used to irritate me because it seemed like they got so much more attention than I did. And maybe they did short term, but then you circle back a few months later, sometimes a year later and realize that everything they did did not get them that far, but they were doing what they felt they needed to do because that's really all they had to offer, you know? And for me, I, I started to embrace my introvertedness and my, how do I say, um, not necessarily shyness. It is a certain shyness that I have off stage, but I started to be really appreciative of the fact that I don't have to do so much and be so loud. But my whole point of this, right, is sometimes we feel like we're not enough because we're not as loud or we feel like people who aren't as talented get more shine or more attention or we feel like people who are not as nice and not as good of people get the most attention or they seem to get the most perks out of life right but the only reason why it seems that way is because they're loud and something that I'm having to learn for myself is just because I'm being loud doesn't mean that this is all I have to offer it just means that I'm working just as hard as the person that I feel like does not do as much as me I'm working just as hard as them to garner that attention but the difference being that when I get that attention I know what to do with it and I have a lot to offer and I have the ability to maintain the attention because I have so much going for myself. I think when it comes to being good people, 
we have to remember that as well. Like good people need to be just as loud and flamboyant as the bad people. And that's where having gratitude and being tough. He says something about, you know, being have like gangster persistence, right? We have to be just as tough. We have to be just as loud. We have to be just as out there. And how do I want to relate this to a feeling of gratitude? Well, more so for the line that I read, you know, be willing to accept the wounds that come with having an open heart. It doesn't mean that I'll be treated better just because I'm kinder, right? It doesn't mean that I'm exempt from negative experiences in my life. And so I accept everything that comes with the journey. Right. I accept everything that comes with the experience. And that's where gratitude comes into play. We have to remember to choose gratitude and to choose the positive in all of these situations, because that's what's going to get us through those challenging times when we're feeling like we're not good enough. We're not loud enough. We're not we're not out there enough. We have to remember that, you know, this might be uncomfortable, but. I chose to go on this journey and what I choose to be gracious for in this moment is the fact that I can recognize that there's something that I want to change because once I recognize that now I can go into action mode and do something about it and put action behind what it is I'm feeling, you know, whether it's a positive or a negative thing, I'm grateful to be able to recognize the things that hurt me or to be able to recognize the things that make me want to reevaluate myself and ask myself, am I stunting my growth? Am I stunted in my growth? Or is this an opportunity to work on something that's going to help me in the long run? And oof, if y'all, if you could understand some of the things that you may have to go through to get to the success that you say you want to be the person that you say you want to be. I talked about it in the previous, in the recap of the previous chapter, chapter eight, which is growth. And this gratitude is my attitude. It goes right into that growth mindset. And even when it hurts, even when it's hard, I'm going to be grateful that I'm able to acknowledge those things and grateful that I'm able to understand that this is a necessary part of my growth. And I can choose to have a good attitude about it by the way that I react to it. And I'm choosing to be grateful and I'm choosing to look for the lesson. And I'm choosing not to get stuck in a rut by keeping that positive mindset. And I hope the same for you, whoever you are listening to this right now. Hopefully you've made it all the way down here. Thank you so much. But yeah, if you are listening, watching, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, leave comments, answer the poll questions. What do you think about the episode? What do you think about this chapter and my recap at the end? Um, Also, I would greatly appreciate if you like, subscribe, follow, leave a five out of five stars, leave a review. I would really appreciate that. If you'd like to support me further because you love these things, Um, and you would like for me to do more content like this, then consider becoming a patron of mine for just $5 a month at patreon.com slash Lexi ATL. And that $5 a month really does help and it goes a long way. So I would really appreciate that. But thank you so much for joining me on this read along. Again, this was chapter nine. Gratitude is my attitude. Make sure you join me for, I think we have two more chapters left. Chapter 10 is not that long and chapter 11 is the finisher. So we've got two more chapters. I will see you soon. So (laughs) until next time, my name is Lexi. Peace.